Amy Miles' fate was originally decided for her until she managed to survive an attempt on her life. Amy was not supposed to live. Amy was not supposed to fall in love, to get married, to have two wonderful children. Amy was supposed to die before she was born. Amy is an abortion survivor. As activists for the right to life, we often like to think of ourselves as a voice for the voiceless, um, defenders of the most basic human right for those who were too small to defend it themselves. But as an abortion survivor, your testimony is infinitely more powerful. Um, could you tell us a bit about your life? I was born, um, I was born in 1980 and I, I was early. I was adopted and I always knew I was adopted and I knew I was born early. Um, and it was always something really special in my household. My adoptive parents um, just really t always told me that I was cherished and loved, but um, I was born so early that I had a brain injury at birth. And what they had always told me was, oh, Amy, some of those blood vessels were just so tiny that they broke. And so as a result of that, and many, many doctor visits later, I, I was diagnosed with something called cerebral palsy. And um, for me, that just affects my hearing. So that's why I get to wear these nice earphones. And um, it also affects my, uh, my legs. So how I walk and what my gait looks like. But um, so I always kind of wondered, huh, you know, I wonder why I was born early, but I, I never really had to, um, I never really thought about my birth or what it meant when I was younger, because I had a mom and a dad and they loved me very much. Um, but when I had my own children, I had my son Eli um, in 2010, and then my daughter Emily in 2012. I just, the moment I held them, I was like, oh, geez, I just really got to find my birth mother and tell her thank you. Tell her thank you for these beautiful lives. And um, I had asked my mom and dad one night, I was like, hey, you know, I'm thinking about finding my birth mother and what, you know, I just want you guys to know so that you guys just know what I'm up to. And, and my mom was like, oh, uh, are, are you are? Oh, okay. Um, do you want to journal about that? You know, write down some of your feelings. And I thought that's kind of funny. Um, you know, and usually in my household, if we were going through things, mom always said, let's talk about it and write it down. So <laughs> for me, I was like, mm, I don't know, that was a little bit of a trigger. Um, so when she said that, I started thinking, that's, I think there's more to this story. Uh, so the next day was actually a day off of, from work for me. And she uh, brought two uh, coffees over and I really early in the morning and I was open the door and I said, all right, mom, come in, just tell me what's up. Something's up. And that is when she told me that I was born early as a result of my birth mother having an abortion procedure started. Um, and I, that day kind of stood in history for me. I, I was shocked. I, I didn't think that that was, you know, my origin story. I didn't know that there was any more to it. Um, and I'm not sure at this point, and I don't know if I'll ever know um, if the abortion procedure was started and there were instruments or tools used and that's what caused my uh, cerebral palsy or if just the early birth itself uh, caused that. Um, maybe one day I'll know, I don't know at this point, but it really shocked me to know that. And uh, I've come a long way just dealing with what that means and just the fact that I'm here and, um, there was an attempt on my life and I could have possibly not been here, but not only me, but my children um, as well. So they're technically second generation abortion survivors. So uh, that's just, just a little bit about my story. I, I'm still processing all through it, but I definitely have a new, new task to let others know how important life is and, uh, how many have gone before me that didn't get a chance to have their rights known, the basic right of life. Exactly, wow. I mean, thank God you're here. Um, as you said, you were adopted by two loving people. 
So it must be hard to hear people cite the adoption process and the children waiting to be adopted and how difficult the process is when talking about reasons that abortion should be legal and should be something people avail of. Um, how do you feel about that? I absolutely think that every life has has meaning and value and, and every human being, um, you know, these are human beings and human lives that deserve a chance at life. I think um, when you talk in a negative, when we, when I hear negative sounding things like that, um, that's such a negative tone. And I think, you know, it's, it's a little bit like we're playing God in, in, you know, deciding that. And the truth is we don't get to decide that as soon as a human life is formed, that's a human being and he or she has, has every right to have a life. And uh, we're not promised that life is easy or there's not struggles. Um, so uh, I can't speak to that because there's definitely that in the world, but we, we, we aren't walking around as little gods and we don't get that, that choice. And I think too, I just, I started out saying it's negative, but um, there are other options, you know, adoption is so life-giving. And I think, I think that, you know, their families, just like my own mom and dad that just couldn't have a family of their own and thought they would never. And they waited for eight years before they, they successfully adopted me. So it makes me uh, really supportive of the adoption and, and wanting to figure out how, how we make that more accessible. And I know that there are children in foster care in the U S and waiting to be adopted, but how do we, how do we make that process easier for families? Because it's, like I said, it's so life empowering and life giving to those families. Yeah. And to the child, into the child, of course. Totally. Yeah. I think in, in my experience anyway, there seems to be this belief that one is simply better off dead than to live a life where there may be suffering, as if suffering was something that people could avoid. Um, you spoke a little bit to that already, but have you got any more thoughts on that? Would you agree with that statement? I just think um, changing the view of, of how empowering adoption is, not only for the mother, um, because she's not having to do such a permanent thing as ending her child's life. I think uh, abortion does just that. It, it pits the, the mother against the child and it, it, is, it was never intended to be that way. And, and I, I think that uh, we, just, we just don't talk about adoption enough. I mean, I, I know that's certainly the case of how I feel in the US, but we just don't talk about how empowering it is for mother and baby because she never has to go through the trauma of having an abortion. And I think that's something we also don't talk about enough is how traumatic that experience is, whether it's the, a pill form or a proce surgical procedure, it's trauma. And um, I don't believe that women need to go through that. So um, I, it certainly hurts me to say that, you know, when I hear things like in that, in that tone, that, that lives are better off dead, that's just... Um, I would say no, no, life is always better. Uh, one of the things I heard you say in speeches and talks of yours that I've listened to um, that I found extremely moving is that you forgive your biological birth mother. Um, I think it's something we all like to believe we would be capable of, but of course, so few of us find ourselves in your situation. How has choosing love and choosing forgiveness affected how you view abortion vulnerable women? Well, I, I, I am a believer and uh, I have to say, I, I didn't come to that point by myself. I really relied on, the, on God's grace. Um, and just, just, it takes a lot to be angry and um, takes a lot of energy. And I certainly have my moments of anger, you know, every time my legs hurt, uh, because the muscles are tight, or when I fall, um, I, I get angry, but I think holding on to that, it, it, it is just not good for 
me. It's not good for my heart. And I definitely rely on my faith to, to help me get to the point where I can say, I forgive you. And I think there are a lot of women who have bought into the lie that this is normal health care and that it, it, you know, it's the best option for them wherever they are in life. And, um, you know, I wasn't the only one that, that had trauma when I, on my birthday, my birth mother had trauma and uh, it's something that I know she's never forgotten. Um, I don't have a, a relationship with her right now, but I do know enough to know that she has never forgotten my birthday. And I don't think it's a happy memory for her. Um, and I think that there are many women uh, yeah, you know, that are pressured into this or coerced or, um, you know, told by their medical professional, this is the best option. And that makes me really sad. I have empathy for, for them because it's something that I wish they never had to face. It's, it's the industry itself that I, I, um, I have a hard time with, but the women, um, I, I, I have a lot of empathy. My heart has grown through my own process of learning my origin story. I just think that, you know, um, I know for the, for where I'm at in the U.S., I, I just think that there's other things that we could be doing to uh, give women who are in scary, unplanned pregnancy situations support, um, you know, tangible support. I think our, our government here could definitely, um, you know, give them financial support, whatever it may be, whatever they, they need in order to have a baby, because this isn't just a clump of cells. I'm, I'm much more than a clump of cells or a product of conception. Those terms really frustrate me and they anger me because, um, you're talking to me right now. I I'm living, breathing, I'm here. And, um, and I just think, you know, countries can really need to rally together to to support women who are on unplanned pregnancy situations, give them the help that they need so that they can navigate that. And I just don't think I know we do enough. I think we need to do more. I think we can do better. I totally agree. Um, it's the same here. It seems that there's all sorts of supports and, and things available if you're looking for an abortion. But when it comes to a woman who is in the same situation, is struggling, Maybe it's an unplanned pregnancy. Maybe she's just started college. Um, it seems like besides uh, Gianna Care, who we have, and uh, some other organizations, um, there's very little support if you find yourself in the same position as an abortion. Well, you are an abortion a vulnerable woman, but as, as in, in the same position as a woman who is looking for an abortion, if you then decide, no, I'd like to keep my baby, I'd like to keep my child, there's very little support available for you from the same government who would give you the right to abort your child. So it's very much a, an anti-life sort of attitude that is so pervasive in society, not just here in Ireland, but I mean, I'm, I'm sure you would agree in the States as well. Mm. And it's very, it's very upsetting to see um, you know, the, like life is amazing. Life is wonderful, even when it's full of struggles. All life has struggle. So to see such an anti-life attitude just bleed through society is, it's extremely hard to watch. I think, uh, I think the one thing too that, that always gets me is, is my own children. Abortion steals purpose. It steals generations of purpose. You know, I've got, I've got, you know, people that are my people and, and just, I think it's a web. It just is so intertwined and, you know, it's hard for me to imagine without my life, without them. And, um, I think it just, abortion really cuts through the, those ties and, and just generations of, you know, possible, possible leaders, possible teachers, possible chefs, you know, artists, it, those are all lives that, that didn't get a chance to have life. Um, and I just think it's the, the impact goes on and on. It's a generational impact. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I actually recently heard a, 
a slogan or a post online from a, a pro-life group that I thought was really good. It was um, for the mother, you know, just a few months of your life. I know you're struggling. I know you may not want to keep me, but just a few months of your life means my entire life. It means I get to have my entire life. And I thought, wow, um, that's, it definitely hits hard and uh, it's definitely true. Um, and I think we really need to work at promoting that to people, uh, to mothers, to women. Those are really powerful. I would have, I would have liked to have that bumper sticker. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Amy, um, for being yeah, here. Thank you.